Hi, I'm Helena. We're back with a new upgraded sketch to image. If you've used it before, I just want to say that this upgrade is totally next level. Many OpenR users have told me that this is beyond helpful, especially for their design work. If you haven't heard of this feature before, it's now the best time to try it. This video is going to show you what it's capable of. By the way, if you want free credits, go watch the third example. I just really want to share this amazing feature with more people. I'm gonna begin with some rendering examples for architecture, interior design, and a bunch of products. Now let's upload a rough architectural sketch. I took this from Tadao Ando's sketchbook. It's a modern art museum of Fort Worth in Texas. We have to put in a text prompt, so I don't want to just name it because the AI might know what it is. I want to show you what the sketch image is actually capable of, so let's not explicitly name the building. I'm just gonna put modern art museum. It's a pretty generic term. And for the first try, let's just leave everything at default. The creativity levels that highest and I didn't change anything else. Alright, if we look at the results that we just got, this image kind of kept the composition. We can see the same angle like this, but it's nowhere near alike. And this image just looks like it's straight up generated from my prompt. So tip number one for creating renderings, especially for architecture or interior design, is to keep your creativity level low. Let's see how this changes the results. Now this is more like the sketch that we uploaded. To further refine this, here is what I would do. I'm gonna lower it all the way to zero. And for the text prompt, I will say modern museum exterior architectural rendering. It's kind of a skill to pick what information you want to share with the AI. I had to mention exterior because from our first failure, I realized that what I said was ambiguous. When I only said modern museum, the AI is gonna imagine maybe the interior, maybe the exhibition inside, which is not what I want in this case. And I also mentioned architecture architectural rendering because I want a better style. So let's go with that. It's getting so much better now. It's such a good way to visualize your designs. If we zoom in a little bit, we're seeing that the edges are a bit wavy. I wouldn't blame the AI for it. The sketch that I uploaded was actually a very rough sketch. So it is originally wavy and this is definitely very cool. And of course, we can further refine our generation according to our needs. Let's say cinematic lighting, reflective glass and water, clean and crisp lines. Will you look at that? And you can keep on iterating until you get something that you like. This literally only takes seconds. By the way, this is a bug. It's not showing the correct value. We actually had it set to zero. Don't worry, we'll get it fixed in no time. I'm glad I caught it though. And then lastly, with this example, I just want to show you what the different styles do. Let's try a bunch of styles. I highly recommend switching it around a little bit. You'll definitely find something that's best for your case. Let's check it out. This is photorealistic and these two are digital art. I think this is actually my favorite style for this one. The lighting's just amazing. And then we have anime. It's very interesting. It even took the signature. Architecture. This style is definitely the most professional architectural rendering style. And finally, we have 3D. I would usually start with default, it's the most versatile, and then I would explore a few different things until I find one that I like and I'll just stick to it for the project. Now let's do this for the interior. There are a few examples given here. This one is the sketch of a living room. Let's put in a very simple prompt, and that's what we're getting. Of course, we can guide it more by writing the text prompt, adjusting the creativity level, or even picking a color theme. So let's say I want the room to have a green tone. I can describe it here. I love this. It doesn't just give me a dull room. It made up a really nice color palette. We have the couches to be green and some of the cushions are actually white. And it's just very aesthetic and they go really well together. And because I mentioned plants, it's giving me a lot of that element. Also, because I said sunlight, it even added a little window here. And you can see the sunlight projecting into the room from the window. The lighting's super natural. As you can see, the original image didn't have a window and the elements were actually a little different. There were no plants. So this is the AI being creative based on what I said. If you wanted to resemble the original image more, I would lower the creativity level. Now if we check the images, we set it to 0.1 and now if you can see that even the paintings in the back are resembling the original composition. This one's actually so cozy. I love this touch of the transparent glass panels. And yeah, really great textures, lightings. Now it's even preserving the bug and two little things on the table, like the original image. Back to our creation settings let's delete that extra text prompt there and this time if we go to the pick a color theme and say we clicked on dark green and create from there that's also really cool 
and don't forget that we have different styles. There's actually a interior design style. You'll probably like this better because the interior design style is trained to know the aesthetics better. It has more knowledge on the textures, the ambiance, what lighting to throw in, and so on. Now, this was a rather simple sketch. Let's actually try a more complicated one. I took this sketch from Catherine Pooley's Top Interior Design Tips. It's such an insightful journal. And you'll notice that in this example, the brush strokes are much more delicate. I think this will definitely be a challenge for AI. So let's see if it'll disappoint us. Let's keep it simple for now, just call it a dining room. No extra descriptions. Set creativity to 0 0.5 and we're gonna keep it on interior design, but this time I'm gonna pick a lemon color palette. It's kept the composition really well. The structure looks right. It's just some of the floral patterns are being left out on the chairs and the walls. So let's try to add a little bit of description. It looks like it went a little bit overboard. To bring it back a little, I'm actually going to lower the creativity. And this one is really not bad. It's leaving most of the originally clean parts clean, and the added patterns also followed the original. With that, let's just try a few more color palettes. These are so great. I'm especially impressed by the dark color theme. I thought it was going to give us something gloomy, but this really aligns with the original style of the sketch. You can do this for almost any design sketch, characters, products like shoes and bags, cars, as long as you keep in mind the two tips that help with the AI creation. Let's do another example with the car. So the sketch that you upload doesn't have to be black and white. It's okay to have colors. You can still use the text prompt or the color theme to guide the generation. For this current image, let's keep the creativity at 0.2. For product renderings, I recommend starting with anything from 0.2 to 0.5. This is a Gordon Murray T50, but I want to show you the true capabilities, so I'm not going to tell AI what model this is. I'm just going to say car, and instead of default, I'm actually going to go with 3D. And here are the results. Let's take a look. So the generated image is still very coherent. The colors from the sketch didn't affect anything. We can generate any style or color palettes by just describing it. This style is kind of a 3D rendering style. And if you want something more realistic, you can always go with photorealistic. And now it looks much more real. I actually love this one. It's so sleek. It's so helpful because now you can describe any environment that you want to put this thing in. Let's say Iceland. Stunning. We can also say driving by the ocean. Now, isn't that cool? The last optional setting that I want to show you is you can have an extra reference image. Think of it like a style reference. I just went through my files and picked a quite random image for the style reference. It's a pretty aesthetic water droplet forming ripples around it. This is nuts. We're getting the style from the reference image and the original composition from the sketch. I just went a little bit more extra with the prompt. Now we're seeing water splashing from the sides of the car. But basically, there's just a lot of space for flexibility and control that you can put into this feature. Here's how to get 100 free credit. First, subscribe to the channel and then go to your OpenArt account, click settings, and here you'll see a username. Just copy that username, comment sketch to image along with the username, and you'll receive the credit soon. It's limited amount, so do it fast. We can also use this to make illustrations. I generated this sketch with a coloring book model. It's really great for black and white line art. Let's take this to sketch to image. Let's put in 3D Pixar style, but an urban setting, let's say semi realistic. Let's go with default and no color theme. These are really good. The default style actually did much better than I expected. Let's try the other styles. We have digital art, 3D, Pixar, and fantasy. The Pixar style's definitely very Pixar. It even threw in a Picasso-style Mickey Mouse. Before we head out to recap, the first tip is to adjust the creativity slider. The lower it is, the closer it resembles your original sketch. The second tip is to make good use of the text prompt, explore and pick the right style, and also set a color theme or style reference for next level creations. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. I put all useful links under the video in the description. And don't forget to check out OpenArt. Have fun creating.